All right. Let's continue. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's been a long day of batch filming, guys. Um, hi, and hello and welcome. My name is Carrie. I create style. I create style. I do create style. I create content on vintage style, 1930s fashion, and glamour on a budget. And today we are going to be talking about uh, vintage brands, specifically vintage reproduction brands. If you watched my last video, which I'll link up above, um, I sort of outlined my approach for this little series, my methodology, if you will, as well as I also uh, delved into brands that are vintage inspired. And I, again, I talked more about that whole process in the video that I will link up above. Um, but for this video, we will be focusing on vintage reproduction brands. And these are different uh, from vintage inspired brands in the sense that they are often um, a bit higher in quality, generally speaking, and they often too will have more of those period details that vintage style enthusiasts really love about true vintage clothing. And oftentimes too, these brands will really sort of hone in on uh, a couple or a series of particular decades for their style inspiration. So with all that in mind, uh, let's get into the vintage reproduction brand uh, category. Okay, so the first brand that we have on our list is Revival Retro UK. I have not shopped with them before. This is just what I could find researching them on the internet. <laughs> so they are a small uh, UK-based clothing brand that has both, it's kind of unique in that it has both true vintage items and also reproduction pieces. I think that distinction could be a little more clearly outlined on their website. Um, usually things that are vintage inspired will say like replica, things like that, but it could be like maybe a little bit better organized, but still, um, that's a really cool feature about it. It also has clothing both for women and for men. Uh, so I think that's also really neat. It focuses particularly on the 1940s. It also has some really cool um, reproduction suits and outerwear items uh, for both, if I remember correctly, for both women and men, which is something that's really hard to find uh, if you're into vintage style, but you can't find a true vintage suit that fits you or you know you don't really want to wear true vintage clothing items uh, this could be a really cool option for you i would say their target audience is you know vintage style enthusiasts obviously uh, as well as um, people who like to dress up maybe be a bit more formal for professional wear hence the focus on suits uh, they don't seem to have any plus sizing uh, their largest clothing size is an xl i don't know if that's xl uk or if that's us xl i'm assuming it's xl uk but um, they don't have any plus sizing in what they offer or in their imagery, uh, which is, you know, something that could be improved, obviously, and they have very little racial diversity in their modeling as well. Um, I haven't tried this brand, as I said, but I would guess that from the fabrics that they say they use and some of the up-close images um, that you can look at on their website, I think the clothing quality is quite good. So. I can't really say anything more beyond that. I don't have any um, information about the sustainability and the ethics. Um, obviously, selling true vintage is both ethical and sustainable. Um, I don't know where they are producing, where or how they're producing the um, vintage reproduction stuff, but if I find more information, I will link that below. Um, yeah. The next category is uh, this brand Week Week the <laughs> Weekend Doll, which I found on Instagram. Um, I would say their vibe is sort of 1930s, 1940s esque. Like um, target audience, I would guess would be women in their 20s and over. Uh, they do have limited plus sizing. I think the largest clothing size is double XL, which I think counts as plus size. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so they have limited plus sizing both in their clothing and in their imagery, as well as very little racial diversity. I have not shopped with them, so I can't speak to the product quality or the sustainability 
and or their ethics uh, in their production ethics in particular. So I don't have any information on that. Um, but again, if I see any, if I find anything more, I will of course link it in the description below. And they do have some really cool 1930s uh, sunglasses, which I may have to get at some point. The next clothing brand is going to be La Dame. La Dame is, I would say, sort of modern day mod Parisian, um, sort of mid-century elegance, all that stuff. Um, their designs, I was gonna initially put them in the vintage inspired category, but when I was looking more at what they're offering, um, I was going to do that because some of their designs seem a little more ca tater ca yeah, tailored to sort of modern sensibility. But at the same time, like as I was going through their site, the designs are very intentional, very deliberate um, in terms of the inspiration um, and the, the detail. Um, and this comes down to even how they photograph their models, i.e. they're sort of reproducing um, iconic images like creating you know iconic clothing and then posing the model in, in, in a way that sort of emulates the original source of their inspiration um, so yeah and I think you know it's very cool I think their target audience I would say is women in their t between 20 and 40 I don't know you know something like that um, you know I don't see any reason why a 20 year old or a 40 year old couldn't wear some of their stuff you know um, they also have a, a particular sort of mod inf influence, at least in this latest collection, which I think is really neat. Um, they don't have any plus sizing, which is unfortunate. Their largest clothing size is extra large. Um, and, this com and this comes down to both like what they're offering and also they don't have any plus size models in their imagery, as well as very little racial diversity, so that could be improved. I haven't tried this brand myself. I think I found them on Instagram. Um, but I would guess, again, from the fabrics that they use and some of the up-close images, like up, if you can like zoom in on some of them, I would guess that the quality is quite good. So definitely worth trying if you're up for it. Um, they do say that they use a mix of natural and recycled materials. I think they use recycled polyester in some of their pieces, which is excellent. And it's possible that they also focus on local production. I'm not completely sure but it's possible so yeah all right the next brand is what katie did and you may know what katie did um you may know of what katie did because of their uh, mid-century inspired lingerie um, but they also have um, a fashion line so i'll be kind of focusing more on that but obviously we can get into some of the lingerie stuff uh, i think their vibe is very much mid-century glam. They say on the website that they're specifically sort of focusing on or they're known for, you know, the Dior years. So like the, the years that, the decade that Dior was uh, actively designing. So 1947 to 1957, which is really cool that they get like very specific. I, I, I like that. Uh, women, obviously their target audience. Women are female identifying people. I would say in their 20s through their 60s. Um, they say that they, you know, they've worked with models within those age, age ranges. So I'm assuming that's also sort of who they're targeting as well. Um, they do have um, larger sizes. Um, their fashion lines, which I think their fashion is more recent than their, their lingerie work, but their fashion goes up to a US size 22. Um, for bra size, they go up to a, an F40, or sorry, a 40F. Um, but I would like to see more sizes this is for their lingerie specifically i would like to see more sizes and more more style options rather available in their smaller sizes so i can partake in some of that um they yeah so even they do offer plus sizing but i would like to see more plus size models in their their product imagery i think that would be really cool um they also have like specific information about like models and who they work with on their website which i think is really cool giving the models you know a shout out as opposed to just treating them as a prop for their for clothing um they do have some racial diversity but they i think it you know could be improved product quality i would say is very good um i have shopped with what katie did before um i have their stockings their um back seamed tights which are very very good 
Um, I'm wearing them now. <laughs> and I did purchase their 1930s uh, jumpsuit or a plazo beach pants, beach jumpsuit thing, uh, which is very, it's good. I mean, they, it's really, really nice quality uh, down to the metal zipper and it's, I think it's all cotton. So yeah, they had me at that. If it was like a poly blend, I wouldn't have bought it, but the metal zipper, all, all cotton, it's really nice. Um, for their clothing too, they tend to focus, I think a bit more on, you know, the 50s-esque shapes, but they do have a sprinkling of other decades in there. Um, sustainability and ethics, this is really neat. Um, they say that they are f focusing on um, supporting local factories and factories that have like older manufacturing practices. So they work with um, one of the, I think last, like, yeah, one of the last like factories that's special in, in England that focuses on creating like fully fashioned stockings. So that's really cool. You're sort of keeping the craft of this manufacturing process um, alive, which is really neat. And um, the owner also says that she spends a few weeks a year, um, like super, ideally super, like on different factory floors. I think they have factories in India um, and Thailand, which is family owned. And then she's specifically said that her time on the factory floor, quote, frequently unsupervised with full access to all the paperwork and members of staff, which is good to know because with factory visits, sometimes you don't know under what conditions that visit is happening, you know? And like, are the, is the owner of this, comp of this brand that's working with this manufacturer, are they getting an authentic experience of what production is like for the people who are making the cl making these things, using their labor power to make these items. You know, you don't really know if what they're seeing is accurate or not. So it's really cool that she says she's able to get, you know, unsupervised access to s staff and the conditions there. Um, so yeah, that's really neat. And they're also shifting, they say, to more, they've shifted recently to more recyclable packaging and that some of their um, hosiery styles are made with recycled yarn, which is really neat. So yeah, I think very great. It's always good when you can find, as you're researching, if you can, the more information you can find about their manufacturing uh, practices, the better, you know, that is, that's a good, it's a good sign. It's a good sign. So yeah, what Katie did, Good on you, man. All right, the next brand is the Seamstress of Bloomsbury. And uh, I would say um, this brand is sort of classic vintage mid-century, sort of classic feminine vibes. Like Audrey Hepburn is kind of what I'm getting from this brand here. Um, I would say their target audience are women in their 20s through their 60s, because a lot of their designs are really sort of timeless. Um, their size inclusivity isn't great, I think their largest size goes up to a US size 12, and they do have some racial diversity in their models, but that could definitely improve. It's been a while since I've shopped with them, I think since like 2018, um, 2017, and I remember their blouses being very, very good quality, made of uh, like rayon crepe, I think, um, this particular style that I'm thinking of. Um, which is very much like, you know, the material that you would find in a true vintage blouse from like the 1940s, for example. I think for me at the, t at the time, I didn't really know how to care for it because I was used to wearing polyester stuff, right? So I didn't, it was like, I didn't know how to properly care for something that was made of rayon crepe, but I do now. So that's something that I would definitely value at this point in my life. Um, so yeah, as I remember, a uh, very good product, very good quality of products. Um, and because of this, if you go on their website too, like you can, they may not have all the sizes in stock. And that makes me wonder if they tend to produce their products. We're getting into sustainability and ethics here. I think they may produce their products in smaller quantities. And if that is the case, that's very good because it will lead to less waste, material waste in the manufacturing process. And there's the greater potential that products that are made in this way are m more likely to be made ethically as well, like from a labor standpoint. All right, the next brand, number six, we're on number six, is Vivian of Holloway. Um, oh, by the way, 
seems such a Bloomsbury, they do have some men's options, but it's limited. Vivian of Holloway also has men's options. We'll get into that in a second. Um, for Vivian of Holloway, uh, I think their general vibe is sort of classic, but like a quirky kind of twist to it. Uh, they focus a lot on 1940s and 1950s style styles. And I would say their target audience, based on their modeling and how they're like styling the models, is people who are like you know in their 20s through their 60s into like vintage style, but also kind of alternate sort of alternate lifestyles probably. Um, size inclusivity is kind of meh. Like it goes up to a size 26. I think that's UK size 26, um, or an extra large. Uh, so you know mo room for improvement there. And they do have some racial diversity with their models, but that could also improve. Um, I can't speak to all of their product quality, but I do have their Catherine trousers in the soft fabric, which are very nice. Um, they are, I think, a polyester viscose blend. Um, I would prefer now for them to be like a wool or like a linen blend option, but the product is very nice. Um, it's very soft. They're prob the, those pants, those trousers are probably the thing I wore the most last winter. So, you know, it's hard to go wrong. Um, yeah, not bad in terms of that product quality. I would like to see more natural fiber pieces, but all in all, pretty good. Um, sustainability and ethics, they say that their garments are made in London, so that's really good because uh, you're su supporting local industry. I don't know under what conditions um, or like who owns the factories, all that kind of stuff. So I would want a little more information on that from them. But like uh, seems just a Bloomsbury, they seem to produce products in smaller quantities. So that's good because less waste, more likely to be ethically made, all that good stuff. All the stuff that we want to see. Um, okay, next brand, number seven, Heyday Vintage. Um, also has men's options, by the way, but I think they're limited. Are they? I don't remember. They do have men's options. If you're interested, go check it out. <laughs> uh, for Heyday Vintage, I would say their vibe is sort of, again, kind of, they're kind of, I think of them kind of on the same tier as uh, Vivian of Holloway with, you know, classic, but also kind of quirky. Um, they tend to focus, I think, more on late 1930s and 1940s styles. Target audience, again, 20s through 60s, alternative vintage style. Um, they have some size inclusivity. They say their sizes go from extra, extra small to a 3XL for men, but women seem to have a little more, slightly more limited sizes. Um, but they do feature more sort of full figured, more plus size models in their imagery, which is great. Uh, some racial diversity, but could improve. I don't have any information on product quality or sustainability and ethics, so I really can't speak to that. Next brand, number eight, is Miss Candy Floss. And the general vibe of Miss Candy Floss for me is sort of classic femininity, very 1950s, maybe early 1960s, so classic kind of mid-century, uh, very sort of, I would say, ultra-feminine, but something that you could wear to work, you know? Yeah, I would say their target audience is sort of working professionals because a lot of their clothing is a little more, um, I think, suited to like a work professional environment. Uh, a lot of coats, suits, jackets, and skirts, that kind of stuff. Um, I would say people in their 20s to their 60s could wear, you know, this this type of clothing. Um, yeah, working professionals basically. Um, what they, what what I like about their website is they offer suggestions for what garments to wear or to look at based on not only your size, but also your body shape, um, which is really, really cool. So that's a great feature to have. They offer sizes from extra small to 5XL. Um, I think this diversity, so all that's great. I think their diversity could be better represented in the models that they have uh, actually wearing the clothes. Um, and they do have some racial diversity, but again, could improve. Um, I think, I can't remember if I bought anything from them. I honestly don't remember, but I feel like it's pretty good quality. Yeah. 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 Um, I can't speak to the sustainability or the ethics. Um, if I find out more, I'll let you know. I think we're at number nine at this point. Uh, so for this 
brand, uh, we're going to be talking about Emmy Design Sweden. And I would say when I think of Emmy Design, I think cozy, colorful, vintage pieces. Um, they focus really on, they have a lot of good 1930s stuff too, by the way, which I'll get into. Um, but they tend to offer, they also offer a wide range of decades. They, I think they recently over the summer released like an Edwardian inspired collection. Um, so yeah, they tend to go from like the 1900s to the 1940s, I think. Um, their target audience, I would say, is working women, 20s through 60s, very broad, but that's just my perception. Uh, for size inclusivity, they have Scandinavian sizes, okay? Um, 34 through 52, which I think translates I did some conversions to a US extra small to a double XL, so could have more size inclusivity, but you know, I don't know. Um, they do have some models of color, some racially diverse models, as well as older models, which we have not seen. This is the first brand that actually has a model who has gray hair, you guys. What a trend, what a, what a glass ceiling breaker, I don't, Great to see, love it, okay. Um, product quality, they are starting to use more natural fibers um, like linen and, and wool. They also use uh, viscose in a lot of their dresses. Um, so that's great to see. Um, I bought a robe from them last year, like a 1930s, kind of like a short sleeve robe. And it was great, but I had to stop wearing it because in the, even in the winter, honestly, I mean, not that it gets that cold where I live, but because it was mostly polyester, it would just get so hot. And so I had, so I never really wear it because it's just way too warm to wear most times, which is a shame because the, the style, the cut is really nice. Um, anyway, but I think right now they're moving more towards natural fibers, which is great. Um, yeah, and also I think of, when I think of Emmy Design Sweden, I really think about their knitwear. They have a lot of really cool, really cute, especially in their new fall winter collection, really cute knitwear. So if knitwear is your thing and you don't know how to knit or you don't want to pay someone to like, commission someone to make something for you, go to Emmy Design Suite and they have some really cool stuff. Um, if I was in a climate that was mostly chilly or where it actually was, you know, 50 degrees, in the fall or whenever. It doesn't get hot here until like November. Okay, not really hot. It doesn't get cold here until November. So I can't really wear knit stuff. It just isn't practical for where I live. But if you do and you like vintage, especially like 40s, 30s, 40s, even heck, like even Edwardian stuff, check them out. They have some good stuff. Ah, um, yeah, sustainability and ethics. Uh, they say they do work with fabric suppliers in Scandinavia as well as, um, which is really cool to see, because keeping it local, um, there are non-knitwear pieces are made in, um, in, made in Lithuania. I'm not gonna pronounce the city, but I'll put it up here maybe. Um, and then their knit garments are made in um, Southern China. So it's good to really, it's really good that they even name like the cities where they're made in. Um, yeah, Whew, I need a break. Uh, we're almost there, we're almost there, okay. Our next brand is perhaps my favorite brand, uh, re reproduction vintage brand, and that is House of Foxy. I love House of Foxy, I uh, love it so much. Um, I got two really great dresses from them earlier this year and I just, it blew me away, honestly. The quality, but we will get to that. Uh, the general vibe of House of Foxy, I think, is sort of old Hollywood glamour, but also kind of like fun and feminine, I think. That's how I would describe it. Um, their target audience is, I would say again, working professionals, women 20s through 60s. Um, they do have some, I would say, well, their size inclusivity is limited, unfortunately. They have UK sizes 8 to 18, and they have select sizes that you can order in smaller or larger sizes, but the majority of their products um, are UK size 8 to 18. Uh, they do have some racial diversity, um, but they could do more. The same thing with their model diversity, both in, also in sizes. I think I would love to see more uh, plus size models wearing their clothes. Um, yeah, product quality, 
at least in my experience, has been very good. It feels um, like the two dresses that I bought feel like authentic vintage pieces. Um, that's mainly due to the fabric. It's just so, just, mm, it's really great. Uh, that said, you gotta be careful with where you are walking and don't wanna snag on this particular fabric, but the quality, it feels like a true vintage piece. And that's the only brand that I can say that about with confidence. I mean, maybe seems just a Bloomsbury, um, but it feels really authentic, which is one of the reasons I love the, the brand. Um, yeah, for sustainability and ethics, they say that their items are made in the UK and in Europe. Um, I don't know under what conditions the products are made, so I would love more information about the factories, the manufacturing process, maybe even like naming, you know, cities and all of that would be really, I think more information is definitely better. So that is House of Foxy. All right, next brand. I don't know where we are. I have lost track of how many brands, where we are in this process, but I think we're getting close. So bear with me, please. If you can do it, I can do it. Uh, I'm the one talking. Okay. Uh, next brand is Miss Victory V, which I found on, on Instagram and I had to stop and be like, wow. Um, their vibe, I think, is very, again, similar to House of Foxy. It's old Hollywood glamour, uh, but also kind of fun and feminine. Target audience, I would say, again, just 20 to 60, just casting a wide net here, but a lot, their stuff, uh, at least the most recent design, seems very professional. Um, and I could see a lot of different sizes and ages wearing th that particular product. Um, size inclusivity. Um, not great. It's they offer sizes extra small to double XL, um, but you know, I mean, this could be partially because they're a very small brand. But the size, they don't really have um, a lot of racial diversity or size diversity in their models. So I would love to see more of that. I I have not tried this brand, so I can't speak to the quality. But it looks very well made, and I think they're made. Yeah, they are made with. Um, they work with small family uh, businesses or family um, ateliers. So that's really cool, both from a ethics perspective, but there's also, I think they work in small batches. So um, if that is the case, then that is definitely very sustainable as well. This next brand, I do not know how to pronounce. So I will just put it on the screen. Yeah, I think I also found them on Instagram and I had to stop and click their the sponsored content. Um, or, you know, click their ad. Uh, the general vibe, I think, is very sort of old, Ho again, old Hollywood. Um, they have really rich colors, just sort of glamour, fun, but also there is sort of a, a sense of laid backness to it. Not that that's a word, but a sense of ease um, in a lot of their products. I would say their target audience are, you know, women, female identifying people, 20 to 60 professional uh, working people. Uh, size inclusivity, um, again, not as good as it could be. I think this is a very small company, so I think that probably accounts for the limited sizes. Well, actually, no, that's not exactly true. So they offer sizes extra small through double XL, um, but they do offer custom options for custom sizes. So that is really cool. So I take back what I said earlier. Um, what I will say is that I think they're the size inclusivity could be even more represented in their models, um, as well as racial diversity. Um, I can't speak to the product quality, but it does look very well made, and I love the colors, like, ooh, like terracotta and teal blue. I mean, can you tell I like teal? I yeah. know oh, I have to go this way, yeah. Um, yeah, just really rich colors. Um, it looks very well made, so that's all I can say about it. Um, sustainability and ethics. Some of the items the um, owner of the company actually makes herself, which is amazing. Um, otherwise, the website says her, com her company produces items, whoop, company produces items as they are ordered. So again, you're really focusing on the sustainability um, factor, not wasting materials, but also not wasting, you know, human labor and making items that will never be used. So that is really cool. Uh, yeah. Excellent, good job, 10 out, of, 10 out of 10, not that I'm using a rating numbered system. All right, now we are getting into the two vintage uh, menswear 
reproduction brands that I could find. Um, I found them through Dandy Wellington, so thank you, Dandy, uh, for referencing them in your, I think it's Instagram I found them. <laughs> but, okay, the first brand of this kind is uh, Thomas Farthing, and uh, very, very cool. Um, I would say, I would describe them as definitely heritage menswear, but with a real focus on 1930s and 1940s styles, um, target audience, you know, working men in professional capacity. Uh, size inclusivity for Thomas Farthing. Um, they have, I don't know anything about men's sizing, clothing sizing, um, but they go from an extra small to an XL, and then a 28 by 31, and then a largest size, I don't know, I really, 34 maybe? I honestly, I don't know. I will link the brand up above and if you're really interested, you can go and check out the sizes. Um, they do have some racial diversity in their models, um, but I would like to see, you know, more and even and more also um, inclusivity in their model sizing as well. Um, again, I don't, have not shopped with them, but the product quality looks really well made and um, with a great attention to detail. But they have, you know, a great attention to detail, um, don't, like, with, you know, the high waists and the three-piece suits and the, the check and all the good stuff that we love about vintage, you know, menswear, um, particularly for the 30s and 40s, so that's really cool. And they say that their clothes are made in Europe and Britain. That's all the information I have. I would like to know more about, you know, just I would want more detail with that, but on the whole, very, uh, very impressed. The next menswear focused vintage reproduction brand is uh, Old Field Outfitters. Uh, again, I would say they're very similar in terms of the vibe. Uh, they're similar to Thomas Farthing in the vibe, you know, heritage menswear. Um, but they're maybe a little more casual because they do focus on kind of knits and things like that too. Um, again, target audience, I would say professional men, but also just men who are, or people who like, you know, men's wear from this period. I think they tend to focus again on the 30s and 40s. Um, yeah, uh, size inclusivity, again, can't really speak to too much. They do have a a small selection of ladies items too by the way oh yeah okay these this is the company that does kind of products they, they include in addition to like trousers and jackets and things like that and cardigans and knits they also create items that would seem kind of weird from like a modern sensibility perspective like a modern aesthetic but they do like the plus sixes um, kind of like the cutoff pants that you would see in golf and things like that um, which Dandy Wellington really pulls off and just, yeah, so it's cool that they even like invest in making pieces that would seem a little odd from like a modern perspective. And yeah, their general vibe, I think I would like to see more from their models um, in terms of racial diversity and also size diversity. And um, but in terms of sustainability and ethics, they say that you know their items are made in the UK. So that's really cool, keeping it relatively local. Um, there's the potential to, for maybe for things to be made more ethically, but I would want more information on that. Okay, we are down to the last two, guys. The last two. You've, if you've come this far, if you've come this far, thank you. Down to the last two. Okay, so for these last two, we're gonna be, are gonna be focusing on custom level brands, or rather one brand and one maker. Um, so I felt the need to, I thought about honestly cutting this section out, but I had to talk about Heart My Closet because they are just a really good option um, if you want custom things, if you want custom clothing, and if you're really into like the 50s and 60s, I think is what they, is what they really, what their designs are very, reminiscent of um, and generally I feel like so I it's been maybe six years since I've shopped with Heart in My Closet I used to be in, have like a very sort of 50s aesthetic um, which wasn't in retrospect entirely my thing but when I was like Heart in My Closet um, was a great resource 
and um, yeah, the really target audience, I mean, focusing really on women's wear, but you know, if you love Mad Men, if you love, you know, 1950s, any kind of like shape of design of the 1950s, like they can replicate. Um, for the cost, it's really good quality. Um, and she's really even, I think, well, it's, it, it, it is a small business, um, but the quality of product that you're getting is really, really good, especially if it's tailored for you. Because you can buy um, a lot of the designs in sort of standard sizing, or you can have it customized. I think the, the customization is a little bit more, but still, I think, a pretty good, from what I remember, it's a pretty good uh, markup for the quality that you're getting. And you can, you know, do dresses, she even does suits. Like you can get a custom 1940s, 1950s inspired suit, which I think is amazing. It's really hard to find that stuff, um, you know, off the rack or vintage. And if it's, you know, if you're getting something like that custom made, it would probably be like thousands of dollars. I don't know, but it would be a lot more than what you're getting it through Heart My Closet. Um, yeah, really good. Uh, you can do, um, if you really like Mad Men, you can do, you can get like, you know, reproductions of a lot of Joni's uh, dresses and some other characters as well. Um, just a really good resource and yeah, I highly recommend. Also, if you are into like Meghan, well not, she doesn't, does she do a lot of Meghan Markles? If you're into like um, Kate's, Duchess, whoever, Kate Middleton, that's it. Uh, if you're into Kate Middleton's style, she also does um, a lot of designs sort of reproducing what Kate has been wearing or documented wearing. So. That's also a thing. She does do modern stuff, but I think she's really known for her vintage-inspired, her mid-century-inspired work. And I just had to mention it because it's a really good option, especially if you're really into the, the mid-century aesthetic. And the last, uh, best for last, perhaps, um, brand is not so much a brand, but a maker, uh, Re Rebecca Russell from Bespoke Vintage. Um, she does custom work. I've worked with her before, which is why I am including her in this a little roundup of places to shop. Um, yeah, she does really good. Yeah, she does really good work. Um, she does things from Edwardian to. I mean, obviously, I've asked her to make a few 1930s pieces for me. Uh, really good work. Um, it does get kind of expensive, but you know, you're supporting an individual making all these things for you. And I think in the last year from what her social media presence suggests. Her business has like exploded, which is amazing, you know. Um, and yeah, it feels really good to like message her on Instagram or, you know, you can just, email, like you develop, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship. And uh, I really enjoy, you know, watching her work and she always creates really amazing stuff. And you're helping support someone and helping support their business, their family directly. So that's really, really cool. So yeah, if you want, um, someone to make like if you have a pattern or you have a design that's very specific and you don't know how or don't want to make it yourself she's a really good option um yeah i just had to i had to include her in this roundup because she does really good work and i really enjoy working with her and supporting her and just watching her make really cool things for other people so yeah recommend rebecca if you want to go the custom route um yeah that's it <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that is it for this video. Thank you for sticking with me. If you're here still, thank you. Uh, I hope it was informative. I really tried to organize it in a systematic way and um, not just give a list of different brands, but also sort of, sort of have a criteria uh, through which to evaluate their products and services. So I hope it was useful. If I left any out, if, I, if you know of brands that I did not mention uh, that you want to share, feel free to let me know in the comments um, and I will see you in a couple weeks with another video. All right. Thanks. Bye.